I'll like have that idea or like realize, oh, that's the person I need to reach out to. It's or cliche, I should have asked this question. But you really start uh, with the people you know. A few and, months uh, ago now about a woman named Sandra Bland. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things about radio as a listener is getting lost and kind of feel like feeling like I'm not being handheld my way through a story. Um, I hate feeling like coddled and like someone's explaining, over explaining a meaning of a story to me or telling me exactly what I'm about to hear. Then I hear it and then they say, hey, you just heard that. And I'm like, I know, I just heard it. My name's Mira Bertwintonic and I'm a radio producer at CBC. For 10 years I produced the show called Wiretap, which was hosted by Jonathan Goldstein. So Wiretap was a program that combined like storytelling, uh, phone conversations, short stories, and you were never quite sure if what you were hearing was real or not. Creating something that, sound, that feels authentic is like the best way to get connection with your listener. And if unauthentic can mean something that doesn't have to mean something that's true, it just means something that feels true to them. So it's like you're allowing them to experience their own truth through listening to the, the process, not, not necessarily what actually happened in exactly those ways. So it's really, rather creating a space, like a sound space or a story that allows them to experience their own emotional truth in relation to what they're hearing. <laughs> Board games during a blackout. You cheat on him with his friend. Your son graduates. He forgives you. Drinking too much. Dancing to Stand By Me at your daughter's wedding. You have a midlife crisis. Hot flashes. You rediscover yourself. Getting old. Crossword puzzles. You share reading glasses. <laughs> you tell him you love him. You read him the newspaper. You dress him. He forgets your name. I think even in a doc, there's a lot of ways that you can be a lot looser with um, sticking to all of the facts and in the way you play them, you let them play out. Like you can, I think people get a little uptight about how they really like focus on like this happened and this happened and this happened. And when you focus on that, you're ignoring the fact or you're forgetting the fact that everything you do in a doc or in a radio piece is shaping the truth. Well, we would often record things over the phone, um, and we found that through um, Basically, in, in general, imperfections are your friend when you're trying to create a fiction but wanting it to sound real. So sound quality, any imperfect sounds like um, a bad phone quality um, where you're kind of trying to make the words out or mic noise or bad like distracting sound in the background, all of that can contribute to the feeling that like this is more real because if it was fake, you would just re-record those things until you got a better sound. So on Wiretap, we fake things all the time. You know, there was like millions of examples, but one that I remember particularly well is we recorded this whole episode in a studio, and it was an advice show, so people had called in with messages of advice, and we had a panel that were gonna be giving them feedback. And it turned out that that studio was kind of broken. There was like construction happening next door. It was really loud. There was uh, like the mics weren't working. The voices were just recorded really badly. And so we listened to it after we'd spent, you know, hours recording this thing. We listened to it and we said, wow, this is like barely usable. We can't really put this on the radio. But the content was good. So what we ended up doing is um, pretending that that entire episode had been shot live at this diner um, in Montreal called Hazard's Deli. And we just layered in ambient sound of a diner. We had interactions with waiters coming to bring food in the middle of the piece. We had Jonathan, the host, saying, you know, we're broadcasting live from Hazard's Deli. Like, uh, the owner, Mel, wants you to know that the matzo ball soup's always fresh and, like, come get some. Boy, that's getting me in the mood for some nice holishkis or something. Maybe some liver and onions. Howard. What, what are you doing? Yeah, I'll be right back. Howard, you, we're in the middle of doing a radio show. You can't get up right now. I'm just going to take a little tour of the kitchen. Howard, Helen's going to field the questions. Howard! What's the big deal? Okay, well, I might as well take this opportunity to remind our listeners that Wiretap is being broadcast live from Hazar's Deli today. And owner Sammy Wilczewski would like you to know that the matzo ball soup is hey, always fresh doing, and always on tap. Hey, what's things in here? No, I just want to get my confidence to the chef. Oh, it sounds like Howard must have delicious. forgot to turn off his Always lapel mic. So delicious. I can't stop myself. Uh, it's like crack. Mm, sounds like uh, we're, so we're picking up some sound mm. of Howard in the kitchen. Look at this. I got my belt. And none of that was real. We'd recorded in a studio. Um, but through sound, we were able to create this sense of space and like it masked all the bad sound that we had from the studio. 
And like apparently people even called in and said, you know, oh, where's Hazard's Deli? I want to go check it out. But we had totally made it up. <laughs> Sound is something where it's happening in your own head. You know, it's like the theater of the mind. And when you paint those pictures in someone else's mind, it can be anything. You don't need to be sticking to what's really happening. You can like make up impossible things that become possible through sound. And I think if you, you know, just stick to the facts and stick to these really conventional ways of storytelling, you're missing out on these opportunities to create like really beautiful and unique things.